Today we're making three new Dollar Tree DIYs. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Alright, the first project is going to be a Halloween wreath. We're going to start off with an 18 inch Dollar Tree wreath. We're going to have some deco mesh. This is the 12 inch and some pipe cleaners. Some of these berry picks, ornaments of whatever color you like, whatever size, and some ribbon. We're going to start off by prepping this wreath. So I'm going to take my pipe cleaners. You can see I'm not wearing my glasses here. Couldn't see where I was going. And I'm going to twist one pipe cleaner around each of the little crossbars. You want to go around it so that it doesn't slip up and down. So you're going to go across you can see clearly what I'm doing here, I believe. And then you're going to continue all the way around. Then we're going to start on the outer ring. We're going to go on the outside middle and twist it around. And you can see it moves a little bit. You can use a dot of hot glue um, on the cool temperature on your gun so that you don't burn yourself or use your finger protectors. And we're going to do that for each of these little sections on this wreath frame. Continuing around. And so we have the, I think we end up with about 16 of these all the way around. Yep, 16. So now I'm going to start with my deco mesh. If you don't have the really, uh, the 12 inch and you just have the smaller ones like from Dollar Tree, just be sure that you layer them up and then you'll have a thicker, wider piece to work with. So I'm going to take a little section, bunch it up in my hand, place it down in between starting off on that inside ring here, or it's the center ring, but we're going to call it the inside because we are going to start our, we only are using the inside and the outside of our wreath. So on the inside, we're going to go around and make nine or 10 inch poofs here. So I'm just using my ruler underneath to give me a guide to see how big I want these poofs to be. And I'm going to continue around just on the inside, just like this. Just takes a couple of twists. Just be sure that you're pushing it all the way down so that when you are making the next poof, you don't pull anything loose. Just a couple of twists. Going to go around and do the same thing. I can see through my mesh here and I can see my ruler underneath. There's probably an easier way to do this. I've seen people use their cutting mats to measure and that's a perfect idea. But I have paint all over mine right now, so we're going to do it this way. Maybe you don't have a cutting mat. Just grab your ruler and you can do it like this. We need options, right? We need options so we have no excuse not to craft. All right, so we're going to go back around. And when we get back to the beginning part, I'm just going to unwrap it and put that poof right on top. You can see I'm using my middle fingers there to push it down to make sure it stays down in there. Now we're going to move our mesh to the outside. And again, I'm using my ruler as my guide. You're going to do a 9 or 10 inch poof, whatever size you prefer. The bigger the poof, the larger the reef is going to be in the end. Continue around. Make another poof. And I just kind of tuck my edges underneath a little bit. And that helps that poof to stand out. Tighten that one down in there. And just keep going. I hope you can see what we're doing here. All right, now so we're back to the beginning. And I'm just going to cross over that area where I started. I'm going to start poofing that stuff out, moving that stuff around. Close in your gaps if anything moved around. That's why gluing those pieces down, those pipe cleaners down, can be helpful. All right, so then I wanted to use this. I got this at the thrift store, and I wanted to use this to kind of go across the top. But it's so tightly wound. When I put it down, and you can just, you know, we're going to use this one just on the outside of the ring, of the wreath, on the outer ring. There we go. Um, it had such a beautiful curl, I thought, you know what? 
let's just go with this curl. It's something different. I've never seen it before and I've never done it before. So we're gonna leave this in a curl. We're gonna let this thing do what it does. And I have to say, it reminds me of my hair. I have curly hair or wavy combination, whichever one. Sometimes I like to leave it curly and let it do its thing. And sometimes I like to straighten it. But right now, we're gonna go with the curl, right? It's plenty of humidity in the South where we live. We're gonna let this thing have its curl. So I'm just gonna continue around and I'm not measuring here because I'm just using my poof as a guide to see how far I want this to go. If you don't like the curls, you don't have to do it this way. You know, you can straighten it out, but I think it gives it a little more interest and dimension. And like I said, it's different than I've ever done before. So I like it. It's good to try new things, you know, and to bring you new things. So you're going to continue around like this and the curl will stay in there if you just loosely move it, you know, instead of trying to pull it tight. And you can see what it looks like. Now this is pre-puff. I have not gone through here and fluffed it out yet. Now we're going to start with our ribbons and I chose this. This is like a fabric ribbon. It might even not even be ribbon. It may be something else, but I got it at the thrift store and I thought this beautiful black and white stripe would be gorgeous on this wreath. I love a vintage look and this screams vintage to me with all the black, white, and orange. So we're going to go with it. I'm just going to put my wired ribbon underneath and this on top. Now this has no wire, but that is not going to be a problem in this situation because the poofs that are on the form of the wreath actually help give body to the ribbon and hold it in place. And you'll see what I mean shortly. So if you don't have wired ribbon, you can definitely um, just go ahead and use what you have. I'm going to go back and forth. So now I started on the outside, I went to the inside. I'm gonna go to the next pipe cleaner set on the outside. I'm gonna bunch this up and I'm doing about nine, 10 inches, the same thing as the poofs that are underneath. So they're all about the same size. And I'm gonna twist that around tightly. And then I'm gonna jump back over into the inside and put it on the inside of the wreath. And then I'll go back to the outside, inside, outside, inside, all the way around. If you run out of ribbon, let me show you what you can do. So I ran out of ribbon here. I'm just gonna lay the new piece on top of the old piece, overlap it, put my ribbon back on top, and then twist it around. And when it's underneath, you barely even notice it. You won't even notice in the end that I ran out of ribbon. So you just continue to go around here. I'm going to start back where I left off and go to the inside. When I get back to my original spot, I am going to go ahead and trim it down to make it a little more manageable. And I cut it at about, I think I had it at about 12 inches so that I would have plenty to lock in with my pipe cleaners here. And then I still have my nine or 10 inch poof and I have enough to close up in the pipe cleaner. So I hope that makes sense. I think that what I say, if it doesn't make sense to you, that watching it will make a little more sense. And I'm just gonna trim this off at a little bit of a slant. All right, so now you can go around and poof everything out and pull your ribbons apart. Now, we're gonna pull a stripe and then a solid, a solid and then a stripe, a stripe and then a solid a solid and a stripe and we're going to continue this all the way around and it's going to look like this is woven all the way through the wreath and i love it very pretty and i'm so glad that i did use that ribbon um, you can see it's standing up nicely on its own even though it doesn't have any um, wire in it still standing up nicely moves around just as easily as the wired ribbon that is underneath it and this orange was actually from the easter um, the Easter selection that was put out. But you can use whatever kind of orange you have. Um, and I'm sure you can find some orange this time of year with fall and Halloween. So I know that I'm going to use a sign and this is the one I chose from Dollar Tree. Love these colors. I got it last year and had put it aside. I'm gonna cut the hanger off because we don't need it. I'm gonna cut a couple of strips of paper. We're gonna use hot glue and we're gonna make something to attach this to the wreath. So adding a little hot glue and then placing this down, this will help keep it from popping off the back when you are trying to tighten it up on your wreath. 
and secure it in the wreath. Continue around till you got all four corners done. And then these are the ornaments that I chose and I'm just popping them out to see where I want to place them and to make sure that I have enough. And I actually do have enough. I did try some orange ones um, before this, but I did not like the way that they looked. So with the pipe cleaners that are left, if you do not want those, you can cut them off. You can wind them back into the wreath, whichever way you want. But I like to curl them around my finger and leave them because it looks like another little spooky element, like little spider legs or bug legs or snakes coming out of here or worms, whatever. I like it. I'm going to leave it. But the ones on the outside of the wreath, be sure you tuck those under. If you don't want to curl them on your finger, you can certainly use like a screwdriver, a pencil, something like that, and twist around on that. All right, then I'm going to leave these tops on the wreath because they, I mean, on the ornament, <laughs> because it will help tuck them down in the little crook there. And I am going to add some hot glue and then just press it down. I'm going to hold it down because the wreath, it tries to kind of push back up because it's, you know, it's thick. It's a bouncy wreath. And I'm going to keep adding my glue. Now, these ornaments are actually uh, glass ornaments, uh, so they're breakable, but use plastic if you would like. Uh, what I love about these particular ornaments is that they don't have a seam on them like some of the plastic ones do, and it gives, uh, to me, a more expensive look, you know, a higher-end look. But you can see that some have gold tops and some have silver tops. They were all collected uh, at the thrift store over the past year. I just grab things when I think I can use them. I see them, and I... I think I can use them in a project, so I'll go ahead and grab them. And so far, this is how it looks. Isn't that pretty? And then here's how our sign will go on it, right in the center. So I'm gonna just push those little uh, hanging pieces or my little pipe cleaners to the back, and I'm going to center it and then flip it over. And then I can just reach in there and fish out my wires and go right around the two inside rings and I'm doing about an inch and a half up. Now, if you do inch and a half up on each one of these, then your wreath will be nicely positioned on the top without any corners poking down or looking lopsided. So just try to make sure you have the same amount on each corner. I love it. Love it. And I love that you can actually get all your supplies from Dollar Tree if you wanted to. Yes, true enough, some of mine are thrifted, but that's okay. You can definitely get what you need at the Dollar Tree if you don't have a good thrift store. So just fluffing again to make sure that everything looks nice. And I want to add a little more. So Dollar Tree has berry picks and they have these little, I don't know if they're cupcake picks that are like pumpkins and things, but I love these as little, I love these as little beads. So I'm going to save these to use on the ribbon and I'm going to use some wood slices or half wood beads to use to cover up the holes and to put in a couple of other places on the sign so that it kind of looks like it's tacked down. So I just put them here and there. I definitely need them on the top to cover those holes up. And then just wherever else you feel like you have a little extra space. Then I am going to take one of these pieces. Each of these little picks have a wire on the back. I just cut off the wire and then I'm going to add some hot glue and put it on each little loop of the black and white ribbon. I love that. It looks whimsical to me. And just enough orange in there. I love the vintagey colors, but you could also argue that this is a farmhouse if you would like. I think it is stunning. You could add lights if you wanted to. You could change your ornaments to a different color. Whatever you like. The next project is a Halloween Hollow. This is a cute little village. Y'all gonna love this. So you're gonna go to Dollar Tree and pick up some of these little cute little houses, little gnome villages, fairy garden pieces, whatever you want to call it. I have two new ones and this was one I had from before and my owl I had before. I just went and took it out of our fairy garden in the yard. I picked up some more of these pieces for Halloween. These are painted very nicely. None of that sloppy stuff like that's on the houses there. I'm going to fix these houses. I took them out and gave them a good coat of black paint, each one. And while they're drying, I'm going to work on the platform or the little, I don't know, the area, the little town that we're going to be trick-or-treating in. So I'm going to slice one of these foam balls. One's going to be a little higher than the other because we're going to make a dimension here. And we're going to give our houses a little base 
at different levels. So I decided this one needs to be a little bit more short than the other one, a little shorter. I'm just using my, my little metal ruler here to do that. I use it for my styrofoam all the time. They have pool noodle knives though at Dollar Tree now, but they would work great for this. I'm gonna add some cool temp hot glue and I'm going to put this down on my wood slice. If you don't have a wood slice, do not worry about it. You can get round wood pieces or MDF pieces at Dollar Tree. You can use an old round sign, whatever you have. And then this I got thrifted, but I know that they have had sheets of this before at Dollar Tree. So this is like a mossy sheet piece. And then you can use like a fast grab tacky glue. You can use cool temp hot glue. You can use whatever type of, um, I don't know, adhesive that you want to use. If you use something like a super glue, it's going to take a whole lot longer for you to get this project done because you have quite a bit of coverage that you need to do. So I'm just kind of sliding this around and I did start off with this tacky glue because I thought it would work good, but it goes through the mesh backing and it was sticking to my fingers and I was making an even bigger mess than you are already going to make with this. Be sure you cover your surface or you're going to really be making a mess. Where I need to give more dimension and wrap around those little round spots that are going to be heels, I just give a little cut and just lay it down. It very smoothly kind of combines into each other. It just kind of, you don't even really see a bunch of gaps or areas. You see how it looks. I mean, there are a couple of places, but you can fix that with cool temperature hot glue. If you don't find these sheets, you can just use the moss that you get in bags, or you can use something out of your yard or green, maybe some green felt. Okay, so all of these are black now and I'm gonna start covering my own. I wanted these to look, of course I like them whimsical, but I want them to look a little more rustic as well as being kind of spooky and Halloween-y. So each one of these are gonna get a coat of paint, plus I give detail work. I use gray and green and orange and browns in the project. I use also a darker gray, so light and dark gray for the bricks. Um, just letting you know that ahead of time. So this is all dry and this is going to be our base. And now I'll show you how each one of these look after I finished. Doesn't that look much better? Much better. And then here's another one. Yeah, this is so very much better. I love the forms, but sometimes the paint is so sloppy on these things. And then this one, I turned this little mushroom into a little pumpkin mushroom. Now you just get to decide where you want to put them and flatten out the tops of your heels so that you can actually glue them down on a flat surface. I just used the bottle for that. And then you can kind of play around and see which one you want to go where. And then put on your hot glue. And again, you want to use cool temp because you got styrofoam under there that that would likely melt. I'm just gonna press it down and hold it there for a minute to make sure that it stays. And then you can move on to the next little houses. It really doesn't matter where you put them, which order you put them in. And for that matter, it doesn't matter which houses you pick up at Dollar Tree. Whatever you have, you wanna use, go right ahead and use it. These look rustic to me. And that's why I chose them. So the little mushroom and a stone house and a pine cone. Look how bright that yellow is in the windows. It looks like they're lit up like a Thomas Kincaid painting. I love it. So now we need to make a little more of a curve or a little more of a hill going up to the house. I'm just going to use a little triangle piece of leftover um, floral foam. And then I'm just going to tack down some more of the little grass sheets. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to make it a little more of a curve going up, like a hill. It gives it more dimension. It gives it more interest. It's obviously not lifelike, but it gives it a little more, I don't know, it's a little more convincible, I guess. Convincing. Convincible? What? I, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I need more coffee. <laughs> okay, so if you use your heat gun on here, it will help get rid of all your little glue strings because you're going to have a lot of them using that cool temp. And it also will help shrink that down a little bit uh, onto one another. It kind of melts it together. So I went into the driveway. I picked up some rocks, washed them off, and have brought them in so that I can add them to this little scenery, to our Halloween hollow. 
and I'm just going to put them around kind of like uh, maybe stone walls or something you know retaining walls here and there and then we'll make you could also make like a path or a little driveway or road you know just to give you some ideas because definitely you don't have to do things exactly like I have you could just be motivated to do this yourself any way that you like so now I kind of have somewhat of a divider here between our houses I want to have some steps going up to this one so I'm just tucking some around here and I'm just kind of choosing the ones that look a little more like they fit together this makes me go back to the days when we had to make little projects like this for school or we had to make little terrariums for school this is really this was fun for me this was very very fun it's a playful little thing to do and maybe you could have your grandkids or your kids join in and give you some ideas or help you with something like this so this is how it looks so far and I'm gonna continue to show you you're gonna see it from the top looking down but I'm gonna continue to pick it up and show you as we move along so I'm gonna take just a little tree that um, I had from Christmas it's just a little brown tree I'm gonna break one of these twigs from Dollar Tree and add some hot glue and now we have a trunk and then I'm just going to add it down between two trees in the back here and these trees came in a pack of, there was a green one and a brown one in each one they may have came from Walmart but I got them at the thrift store they might have come from Walmart though originally then I'm gonna use a bigger stick to make this tree even taller because like I said we want height and dimension right I'm going to shrink down the little glue that's all over the place again, and then this is what it looks like with the trees. And then here are all the little creatures that we have to use. Little creatures, signs, trick-or-treaters, and you're just going to start placing these around where they make sense to you. And you can, you can move some things if you don't like it. So I want my owl on top of the house. Ideally, an owl would not be nesting in the top of a house, but I like it there. I want him to be watching over. He's a wise old owl. We gotta give him a nice soft nest. So, got some peat moss. Nope, this is not peat moss, this is Spanish moss. And I'm gonna just wind it up. I twisted it into a string and then wind it up and it will pretty much catch onto itself. And then trim off all the little crazy stray things going on here, the little hairs and such. I'm gonna paint the bottom where I cut off all the excess on that owl with my little bull nose cutters there after he's dry I'm gonna hot glue him in his nest and then we'll put him right up here near the chimney in the top of this house look at his overlook there yes he's happy there he's keeping all the trick-or-treaters safe so then I'm just gonna take my little signs and I'm just gonna place them here and there almost like it's Halloween night and kids are trick-or-treating you see I peeled that one up I wanted to move it so it came up nicely just be careful and slow when you do it and I decided to put a cat and a jack-o-lantern right in that spot look how cute then I'm gonna add two little trick-or-treaters I've put the mummy there and the little witch isn't that cute so I'm gonna turn it around because I want some interest on the back side as well kind of a surprise because you won't necessarily expect to see this so we're gonna hide a little kitty in the back behind the house and under the tree he snuck off with a pumpkin and then I'm gonna add a little sign that says beware cute cute okay y'all it's time for the 16,000 subscriber giveaway it's time to treat you so I'm gonna do that I need you to pause this read all the instructions and then do what it says trick-or-treat light box all right we're gonna take a bank from the Dollar Tree napkins of your choice some spider rings possibly these necklaces and some Mod Podge 
I'm going to take the bank apart, and it just fell apart, so, you know, that's always nice. A little less worse for, work for me to have to do. On the inside of the box is where this is stamped, and it's like painted on or whatever on there, so I'm just taking my little um, knife here and scraping it off without scratching my glass. I'm going to use my little vacuum here and suck out all that glitter, and then I'm going to wipe it down with a little alcohol and a paper towel on the front and on the back of the glass. I'm going to paint the backing white. And the reason I'm painting this white is because I want the brightness of the white to be underneath the orange, which will make it a lot lighter instead of muddy looking if you put it on the brown. I'm carefully, carefully, and slowly using my rotary blade and my mat to cut out the trick-or-treat on this little napkin. This is not a dinner size napkin. This is smaller than that. It's two plies, so I'm just gonna separate my plies. Okay, some footage is missing, so just go along with it here. Let's pretend like it's the backing. We're gonna put Mod Podge on it. We're gonna take a brush and go both directions all the way to the corners. We're gonna take our napkin, place it in the center. You're going to hold it and press outward, gently, gently tapping and pressing outward to get your wrinkles out as much as you can. Gently, gently, gently. I can't stress gently enough. Then after it's dry, we're gonna take some ribbon to trace it out. And we're gonna put a black ribbon. You can definitely get these at most Dollar Trees now. Gonna use some hot glue to attach it to the back. You don't have to use any glue on the front. You can see you can just pull that back and forth until you get it exactly level, and then you can glue it on. Okay, so once that is on, you're going to take your orange Rick Rack. This is what I have. I got it at the thrift store, but you can use a different, or you don't have to use anything at all right here. Or you could use jute if you wanted. Then you're going to do the same thing here, a little hot glue, and then this is how it will look, okay? So we use in our imagination. We are also going to do the sides and the bottom. We're going to take two of those little rings with the stones, I chose orange, black, and white in most of my projects here, so we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to cut the ring section off of the spiders, and I'm going to put them layered over the edge and onto the center, and I'm going to add some hot glue, and then just place it down where they are facing each other, very nicely facing each other. Okay, and then if the sides were done, you get the idea. That's how it would look. Okay, so you can see up there in the corner, that's how it looks when it is done. And I'm going to now take some lights and put on the inside of the box. Now, I have cork lights, but Dollar Tree does have lights that you can use, that you put um, the batteries in, and they're on a little line like this on a wire, and they have little lights in there. You can definitely use those. The wire is bendy, and you can use cool temp glue on these. So just be sure that you do that. You can use the little clamps to hold it in place until your glue sets up so that nothing pulls loose in the corner and you don't burn your fingers. And you're gonna do that all the way around until you've used up all the wire. Leave your little battery pack on the outside and it is thread through the bottom through the bank uh, opening where you would put the coins. So that's how you, get the, how you would get it in there. All right, so now I'm gonna press it back down and it really pops back in easily. Then I'm gonna use some hot glue and just go right in between in a couple of sections on each side so that it does not pop back out. Because we flipped it upside down where the opening for the coins is on the bottom instead of the top. Then you can just hold it, put something on it to hold it in place until it is dry. And this is how it is going to look. When you turn it on, it's gonna be nice and gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? I love that. And the lights just sparkle on those spiders. It's really eye-catching. This would be so cute on a tear tray or anywhere in your house. And you can see how, how it looks when we turn the lights off. So bright, right? I love this. I hope you try it. I hope you try at least one of these projects. They're super cool and easy to make with Dollar Tree items and more. So here's our beautiful wreath. This is our first project. Love it. 
If you love it, I would appreciate a thumbs up. It's very helpful to my channel. I believe in you. And I know that you can make beautiful creations of your own. Have some confidence in your abilities. You can totally do this. Here is our little Halloween hollow. I just wrapped some lights around the edge of it. I didn't glue them down or anything. Just to show you what you can do. And you could wrap some lights around their trees. You could wrap it around all through here if you wanted to. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. I think we have a lot of fun here. It's a very supportive community. I try to make sure that we only have positive comments. Be sure that you go through the comments and read what other people have put there and give them some support. Share this video if you enjoyed it with somebody who you think would also enjoy it. Your support means the world to me. I always love knowing that the love that I put out there for you guys is reciprocated and that you appreciate what I'm doing here on my channel. It's helped it grow to the 16,000 that we have and keeps growing. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.